Did you know that your diet during pregnancy can influence your baby's chances of having obesity in the future, autism, preterm birth for you, and gestational diabetes? And did you know that 80% of your immunity is in your microbiome? Basically, the good bacteria that is in your gut. That can all be influenced by what you put in your mouth and the supplements you take during pregnancy. The science that I'm going to talk about today is actually mentioned in Lily Nichols' Real Food Food for Pregnancy book. I cannot recommend it enough. I listen to it on Audible, especially if you're a busy mom like me. And I did my best. This, These brands of supplements that I'm about to discuss during this video are not necessarily recommended by her, but her recommendations in general, I tried to stick to them in choosing the supplements that I'm going to talk about today. And this is all based on science. Just a little bit about Lily Nichols. She's a registered dietitian that actually talks about how our current recommendations to pregnant women, basically what your typical Western medicine doctor's office is giving you, is based on very outdated guidelines. And Lily Nichols basically studies the current data, the current studies, and tells you all about them and tells you about certain nutrients are basically underrated and and we continue to learn every day about the importance of certain things during pregnancy to avoid some lifelong problems for your baby. This video may be long, so make sure to check out the timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to a certain supplement that you know you want to hear about. Otherwise, let's get started. If you have been pregnant before, you know that there is a test that they usually do closer to the end of your pregnancy called the strep B test, where they test your vaginal microflora to see if you test positive for group B bacteria. Group B bacteria is bad bacteria. It usually lives in your nether regions and it doesn't really do anything most of the time. But what they do is during your birth, Earth, they have to give you IV antibiotics. What those IV antibiotics do is they kill off the bacteria, pretty much all good and bad bacteria in your body, including the vaginal area where most likely your baby will be coming out from. They have shown that when your babies are not properly colonized, that there is an 84% increase in chance of your baby having obesity in their lifetime. And all of this is also linked to allergies, eczema, and all kinds of things. It's highly recommended that you do not take antibiotics during during second and third trimester. I'm not gonna even talk about first trimester, but second and third trimester because that could kill or basically make your bacteria imbalanced and hence your baby not properly colonized. So Lily Nichols mentions one study where they took 99 women and tested all of them at the beginning of the study and all of them came back group B positive. I'm group B positive, okay guys? <laughs> we'll get down to that in a second. And then from these 99 women, they chose some placebo group, which means they didn't really give them any probiotics. And then they chose a probiotic group, the ones that actually received probiotics. And they noticed that from the women that they gave probiotics, 43% of them came back strep B negative, which means the probiotics helped balance their flora to where they would not need those antibiotics at birth. Compared to 18% of the other group that were not giving probiotics came back being negative for group B strep, which tells you how important for example, probiotics are. So let's go ahead and start with supplement number one. I take this Garden of Life refrigerated brand of probiotics that has 100 billion units and it's ultimate care. I really care about the type of probiotics I take. I don't take anything off the counter because they're probably not completely alive. And I know these are a really good brand because as soon as I started taking probiotics, I stopped having also any kind kind of vaginal infections. So this definitely helped me with that. Now, Lily Nichols in her book does mention that you can also take a tablespoon of sauerkraut juice or kefir, basically yogurts or anything with fermented with bacteria that can also help your gut. So I have not tested during this pregnancy. I'm about to be 33 weeks pregnant. I have not yet tested if I am group B positive or not. I have been with my last two babies 
babies. One is four years old, one is five years old. So I assumed that I would be. However, I have been taking probiotics religiously during this pregnancy. When I do tests for strep B positive, will I be positive, will I be negative? The data shows that I'm statistically 43% possibility that I may come back being negative this time around. I really hope so. Okay, so I ended up getting my test done at week 36. And as you recall from the beginning of this video, I was strep B positive for both my first and my second born children. So me coming back as a negative for my third was going to be very far-fetched. But I'm happy to report that the probiotics worked and I actually did in fact come back negative. So definitely consider probiotics. I'm not gonna go down into this, but I really want to have a natural unmedicated birth, which I will talk about <laughs> in another video. Another great natural source of probiotics is kombucha and they sell those refrigerated at the store. They almost taste like soda and you do acquire the taste after you've had a few of them. They're extremely, extremely healthy for you and full of good bacteria. I love my mint lemonade flavor, but they do come in many different flavors. So the other thing that I take with my probiotics is prebiotics and prebiotics is basically food for your probiotics. I take that in a form of just food that I eat. So leafy greens is a good one. Coconut is another good one, which ties into keto eating <laughs> a lot, keto low carb pregnancy. And then I also do shia seeds and Shia seeds are a great source of fiber, great source of fat, and it's basically like a supplement as well. Did you know that shia seeds have more antioxidants than blueberries, more calcium than milk, and more omega-3 fats than salmon? And not only are they good for <laughs> constipated mommies. They're also good for mommies that have the other problem, diarrhea. So they're really good at coagulating and making it easier, especially during pregnancy to have easy bowel movements without having to strain. The next supplement that I take is a prenatal vitamin and this is a multivitamin through with mega foods. Mega foods have been shown to be highly recommended. I was actually anemic uh, when they actually tested my iron levels, which I have been anemic in my previous pregnancies. I tend to not be a fan of red meat at the beginning of every pregnancy, so I tend to get anemic. And my midwife recommended this brand. So it's recommended because they actually have shown in a clinical study that it does raise your iron levels as needed. And I'm obviously a lot better and I have a lot more energy after being diagnosed and starting the blood builder iron supplements. So the multivitamin Vitamin, I take the prenatal multivitamin here and then the iron supplements I take blood builder now notice something again from the book the best iron supplement you can take that is not associated or least likely to be associated to side effects of iron which you can have a lot of side effects is iron bisglycinate that is the best ingredient that you should be looking for in your iron supplement and this is what the mega food supplement has. She does say to stay away from ferrous fumarate and ferrous sulfate. So definitely stay away from those ingredients if you see them in your iron supplements. I will have all the links to these supplements in the links in the description box below along with the link to the book that I have referenced during this video. The next supplement that is very important, especially also if you're experiencing some laxity in your ligaments, like I am, is actually collagen. So collagen is really hard to get through capsules because they are just not as effective at keeping the collagen in capsules. So the best way to get collagen is actually by eating foods directly rich in collagen. And one of those foods is bone broth. It can be chicken bone broth, beef bone broth, and this Kettle on Fire brand, while it is a little bit pricier than the regular brands you find at the stores, is made with grass-fed 
beef and having clean grass-fed beef or free-range chicken the whole point is to have clean food that does not cause inflammation and give you the nutrients that you need so this brand comes highly recommended and it also has different flavors I love their broccoli cheddar flavor because sometimes you know as a postpartum mom especially is when I'm gonna be hitting hard with the collagen as well you don't have time and all you want to do is just pour it directly in a cup heat it up and drink it and they have many different flavors that are very very yummy so make sure to check them out the next supplement I take is vitamin D3 and it's D3 specifically that is the brand that is recommended for best absorption not D2 not anything else so definitely look for D3 and vitamin D3 is the more effective kind of vitamin D and is fat soluble so eating it with a healthy fat like avocado or nuts will make it even more soluble I have in the past been vitamin d deficient i'm always on the low end of vitamin d and i'm actually taking 5000 ius in lily's book she mentions that a study to where you can take up to 4000 ius that they consider safe but none of the people that have taken 4000 ius have come back with any kind of side effects so i figured it would be safe for me not telling you to do this but safe for me to take 5000 ius because I am vitamin D deficient anyway. The next supplement ties into my fear of taking antibiotics during my pregnancy and it is D mannose powder. The reason I take this is to make sure I do not get any UTIs. The D mannose comparing to cranberry supplements which I've also taken during this pregnancy helps you basically avoid and possibly in some cases has seen to also treat some UTIs. So I definitely stick to my d manos to avoid any UTIs. The next supplement is actually magnesium. One of the biggest complaints you'll see that pregnant moms complain of is cramping, especially at night, getting that really painful Charlie horse. It's because we are lacking in magnesium. And Lily Nichols does recommend that you start at 100 milligrams and maybe go up to 300 milligrams. Magnesium helps with nausea as well. And she recommends the best, most absorbed kind is magnesium glycinate. And magnesium glycinate, the ingredient, is less likely to cause any GI symptoms. Since too much magnesium can actually give you the runs, basically. So this is the brand that I use, and it has magnesium glycinate versus any other type of magnesium. You might hear this a lot, and and your doctor probably tells you, and you probably heard it because it tends to be commercialized, is taking folic acid. But actually, folic acid is not the best kind of ingredient you wanna look for in your supplements. You wanna look for methylfolate instead and activated B vitamins. Now, B vitamins I took religiously at the beginning, first trimester, because they have shown to help you with nausea, especially vitamin B6, and you obviously need the folate to help brain development of your baby. This is the brand that I take. It's a bioactive B complex that basically I make sure that I am getting the active ingredients that will be well absorbed into my body and help me get over my nausea and also help my baby grow and develop properly, especially in the brain. Another thing that recent studies have shown to be very, very, very important during pregnancy is choline. And Lily Nichols talks about choline and how you can get it from usually from eating some eggs, but even when you eat eggs, you still need to supplement some more, all the way up to 900 milligrams, which has been found to be recommended for pregnant moms. I take mega food choline, which also has DHA in it, and I do supplement with eggs. I try to get at least two eggs a day to make sure that I'm getting enough choline. Choline has been linked to your baby at four years old, showing better hand-eye coordination, so I definitely wanna set my baby up for the best life, and that is why I take my choline. Now, a supplement that 
that I don't take. I don't take extra calcium. Your absorption of calcium actually increases during pregnancy. So if you're drinking milk or eating dairy products or anything that has calcium, usually you're getting what you need from that. So I do not take more calcium and also calcium might cause some unwanted constipation. And then last but not least, and I will be starting this around week 35 of my pregnancy because my baby is measuring two weeks ahead. And if you're curious about all of that, make sure to check out my other videos on my channel on my journey in my pregnancy. But basically I am starting red raspberry leaf tea and that has been shown to tone your uterus and to help you have a more effective labor basically. There's many studies about that out there, but I know it can only benefit me. So I will be doing a cup of red raspberry tea every day starting around week 35. Red raspberry leaf tea has also been linked to reduced inflammation of the uterus. And the last thing that I will insert in here is not necessarily a supplement, but a food. A lot of studies have shown that eating dates around a tablespoon or two of dates actually helps you as well with your labor. So I will be making a very yummy date ball recipe. So make sure to hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss it. I know I haven't said this in a while, but you are awesome. And remember to be a shark.